The junipers, also called cedars, can be found in almost every county in the U.S. They have a staggering amount of uses for food, medicine, material, and they're easily one of the most useful plants of Texas, which may come as a surprise to some landowners who frequently malign junipers and see them as simply needing to be cleared away. This is Junipers virginiana, eastern red cedar. It ranges from southeast Texas to southern Quebec and Colorado to the Carolinas. Several American Indian tribes' names for this species also refer to its reddish wood. One Comanche name, Ekawapu, means red juniper. The Dakota name, Hantisha, means red tree. And one Dene name, well, I can't pronounce that, means juniper wood red. The generic Comanche name for junipers is Wapu, which is very similar to the Gosiut name for junipers, Wapi. This is ashes juniper, but it's essentially a scrubby form of eastern red cedar. It's distinguished by its more compact needle sprays uh, as opposed to this more spread out form of eastern red cedar. This is easily the most dominant tree species in central Texas and the Balcones escarpment largely divides the populations of eastern red cedar from ashes juniper. If you live in Austin, this population border is roughly Highway 183, east of which is the Blackland Prairie ecoregion where you start to find ashes juniper be replaced by eastern red cedar. So ashes juniper has a limited distribution. So for this video, I will be referring mostly to the ethnobotanical uses of the very similar eastern red cedar, plus some uses of junipers in North America in general. The junipers are in the cypress family, Cupressaceae, so share much in common with the bald and Mexican cypress, as well as redwood and the commercial western red cedar lumber, that's Thuja plicata. For example, they are all very resistant to wood rot, even in contact with ground or water, which has historically made their wood very valuable. True cypresses are in the genus Cupressus, which is an old world genus which is commonly used for landscaping, uh, such as the Italian cypress. They can superficially be very similar to juniper, but I distinguish them by looking for the flat needle sprays that are distinct for the true cypresses, and the fact that they are usually planted. In Texas, besides eastern red cedar and asses juniper, we have alligator juniper, juniper stepiana, found in West Texas, notably the Chisos Mountains and Big Bend, drooping juniper, juniper flaccida, found only in the Chisos Mountains, one seed juniper, juniper monosperma, found in West and North Texas, Rocky Mountain juniper, juniper scopulorum, found here and there in areas of West and North Texas, redberry juniper, juniper cohuilensis, found only in the Sonoran Desert, and Pichos juniper, Juniper pinchodii, found in arid regions of the west and panhandle, plus a few cultivated species. Western juniper, Juniper occidentalis, and common juniper, Juniper communis, are not in Texas, but they are widespread in the western U.S., and there are nine other species throughout the U.S. So first, some interesting things about uh, ashes juniper, specifically. Its bark is the only nest material the endangered golden-cheeked warbler will use, uh, cedar choppers is the name given to early immigrants to central Texas and as a first industry that was cutting these down for fence posts and construction material. And many early settlers' houses in central Texas were made from its wood and to this day is a very valuable wood for fence posts among ranchers. In the past 200 years, the central Texas ecosystem has been radically transformed, with ashes juniper being a key player. The extensive cutting for fence posts and lumber led to the widespread destruction of the largest and tallest ash junipers, which were replaced by the scrubbier forms. These scrubby forms closely shading the ground usually do not allow much to grow underneath them, and their dropped needles acidify the soil allelopathically, deterring understory growth. In contrast, the large forms harbor grass, forbs, and a healthy savanna ecosystem underneath them. And these taller forms are also much more likely to survive a fire, whereas the scrubby form is highly ignitable and can exacerbate any fire, decimating the landscape instead of clearing grass and recycling nutrients. Fire was historically an integral part of this landscape, with frequent low-level fires creating mosaic of woodland and grassland. These fires were either caused by lightning or set intentionally by American Indians in the area, such as the Tonkawa or Comanche, to improve big game hunting. And speaking of big game, the American bison worked in concert with fires to maintain an open savanna landscape. The extirpation of bison and strict fire control in the area has caused many areas that have historically been prairie intermixed with forests of large juniper and oak to be replaced with areas where scrubby form of ashes juniper dominates.
Another factor is genetics. There's actually a genetic tall form of ashes juniper that in structure bears even more in common with the, the tall pine-like eastern red cedar. Because of the aforementioned causes, the genes of this population are becoming scarce while the genes for scrubbier junipers have dominated. You can find relics of these tall forms, uh, ashes junipers, in old cemeteries, ironically. Uh, one is also at Barton Springs Pool. But I digress. What are all the uses of juniper besides fence posts, lumber, siding, and shingles? Well, first is the fruits. The juniper berries, which are actually more like pine cones, taxonomically speaking, they ripen in late summer through winter, but can be seen in trees as early as spring. Uh, Eastern red cedar fruits were eaten raw or cooked by the Comanche and Kiowa, and they were sometimes dried for winter storage. The fruits of Rocky Mountain juniper, one seed juniper, alligator juniper, western juniper, and California juniper were all eaten by people such as the Apache, Comanche, Cahuil, Navajo, Tewa, and Ute. They were eaten raw, cooked, roasted, toasted, boiled, dried, or ground into a meal, or made into mushroom cakes. The northern Ute uh, rubbed juniper berries on a mano with a matate. Uh, to separate out the seeds, <clears throat> and then just ate the pulp or dried it for storage. A Chiricahua and Mescalero Apache roasted one seed juniper fruits in a pan and added enough water to make a thick white sauce. It was used like gravy. They make an excellent spice for meats and hearty stews. Uh, juniper fruits can vary greatly in palatability, ranging from large, juicy, and sweet to small, mealy, bitter, and astringent. So if you try gin, that's a unique flavor of juniper berries, and to the casual tester that it might not seem uh, especially desirable, but if you harvest them at the right time and you pick off the right trees, they are delicious and unique. The Comanche Northern Ute sampled various trees and would find those from which they would gather. So the sap of Eastern Red Cedar and Ashes Juniper tastes not bad, and, and one seed juniper sap was chewed as a gum by the Tewa and also used to fill in dental caries. The inner bark may even be edible as the Diné ate one seed juniper inner bark in times of scarcity. I chewed a bit on this inner bark, and it's not bad, but it's not that great either. It has a bit of a strong taste. But an infusion of juniper needles was drunk by the Gosiute as a tea in the winter. I've drunk this tea many times. It's pretty good. Maybe not quite as tasty as the young pine needle tea, but pretty close. Uh, juniper needle tea had many medicinal uses among American Indians. So a decoction of the needles and fruits was drunk by the Kiowa, Dakota, Gosiut, Omaha, Pawnee, and Ponca for coughs, and the latter four tribes even gave the same treatment uh, to their horses for coughs. A decoction of the needles was drunk by the Gosiut as their preferred remedy for coughs, colds, and ailments of the lungs or throat. The vapors of a decoction of one seed juniper needles was inhaled by the Mexican Kickapoo to relieve chest congestion. An infusion of Rocky Mountain juniper needles was drunk by the Flathead for colds, pneumonia, and fever. And they considered the bows with cones more potent. A decoction of one seed juniper needles combined with wood sorrel was drunk by the Mexican Kickapoo to treat liver disorders. A decoction or infusion of juniper berries was drunk by the Diné to treat flu, and by the Cahuil for fevers and colds, and by the Tewa for chills or as a diuretic. And the berries were chewed by the Kai or for canker sores. A common medicinal use of juniper needles was inhaling or bathing in the smoke of its needles. This was used as an incense, purifying agent, deodorant, and body scent, and all of these uses somewhat blur into each other. After all, what is the removal of disease or disinfection but a purifying of the body or space, and at what point can we define it as strictly ceremonial or ritualistic? So the smoke treatment can generally be described as placing the juniper needles on heated stones or coals and concentrating the smoke by means of the head held under the blanket or the treatment being held in a sweat house, inhaling the smoke and letting one's body be bathed in it. So besides more generic uses such as purification, sickness or, sickness or weakness, it was also used for head colds. These treatments were done by the Apache, Comanche, Cheyenne Creek, Kiowa, Dakota, Lakota, Omaha, Pawnee, and Ponca, and likely others. I burn juniper needles every day. I cut a bag of green palm-sized twigs and let them dry. Once dry, they ignite easily. They can be burned as is or wrapped into smudge sticks with some twine. They effectively deodorize the room and make a great body scent. I like to burn a bunch while taking a hot bath, creating a really thick smog in my bathroom. 
Bathing in a decoction of juniper needles was done by the Mexican Kickapoo for stiff joints, by the Oglala and Dakota for Asiatic cholera epidemic, for which it was also drunk. The Mexican Kickapoo inhaled the vapors of a juniper needle decoction to relieve chest congestion. For a cough, cold, and headache together, the ghost you drank an infusion of juniper needles, sagebrush, or wormwood, and wild mint. There's also a ton of material uses of all the parts of junipers. So creating fire and building shelters are dominated by juniper and it can be even used for bows. In the field I often use juniper needles to clean my hands. It's like having a perfumed antimicrobial brush on a tree. But the Navajo rub them on the head after bathing to remove dandruff. Uh, the dried fruits were also used for beads by the Navajo and they use the fruits and needles for dye. A decoction of powdered needles made by the Lakota or Osage was poured on potato plants to deter potato bugs. Juniper can be used to make all the parts of the house, as shown by Caddo, Comanche, Kiowa, Quapaw, Gosiute, Navajo, Tewa, and Cahuil. Branches or bark used for thatching, wood was used for posts, framing walls and doors, needle sprays or bark was used for flooring, and bark was used for chinking. The Kiowa used it for teepee poles. The Dakota, Omaha, Pawnee, and Ponca put bows atop teepees to serve as a lightning rod, or more accurately to avoid lightning strikes completely. Uh, they considered the tree to be sacred to the mythical thunderbird who nests in it. And the neighboring Cheyenne believed lightning did not strike juniper trees. Juniper bark and wood are all that's required to create fire. The bark is an exceptional tinder with its loose fiber structure and high flammability, making it ideal for catching a spark. This is taught by modern survival instructors and was historically used by the Lipan Apache, Diné, Tewa, and Iroquois. The Ute and the Hopi made a slow match, a way to transport fire long distance, by twisting juniper bark into cords about one to two inches in diameter and keeping the ember alight by occasionally blowing on it. The uh, Tewa made compact bundles to serve as torches. The Apache, Navajo, Iroquois, Illinois, and Huron used juniper wood as a hearth board for friction fire starting, and the Caddo used it for the drill. It was an important firewood source in the southwest. Juniper ashes were used for nixed tunnelization by the Navajo. Uh, I use juniper needles and bark to start fires all the time. It starts immediately with a single flame. The wood makes an excellent fuel with a nice smell. Juniper bark was used by the flathead for making baskets and by the ghost ute for lining earth storage pits for preserving dried fruits. The darker red juniper heartwood was made into flutes by the Kiowa and Northern Cheyenne. The Comanche used the wood for their wartime or shamanic bull roar. I made this one from redwood, which is also in the Cypress family. Juniper wood was used by the Northern Cheyenne, Navajo, Panamint, Klamath, and Yana for making bows. A straight saplings trunk or branch from a larger tree was used, but not the heartwood. The Panamint used a branch from a dead tree to get seasoned wood and made bows with sinew backing. Ishii, the last of the Yahi, made his bows from juniper branches, also with sinew backing. So from tasty fruits to a tea for upper respiratory infections, incense, shelters, fire starting, and bows, clearly juniper is a plant we should value. And it's a beautiful name. So uh, follow or subscribe for foraging and primitive skills classes, announcements, and more videos. Thank you for watching.